Kevin, do you want to kick it off? Yeah, let's get this party started. Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Martini. I want to thank Kelly and Tina for inviting me today. As uh, I'm going to kind of just do a rinse and repeat of a presentation that I did with uh, Tina's crew. Um, I will share with you that right now is a very unique period of time, and a lot of people are wondering what you need to know and what is going on. And as I shared with Tina's uh, crew, I'm also going to share with you, today we are not just realtors with EXP Realty. Yes. Um, what we are is we have to go ahead and understand that at this point we are going to be the actual, uh, I'm sorry guys. Yes. Uh, we are actually the voice of reason, uh, or, or with the voice of certainty in the uncertain times. The reality is this, here's the thing, not to share, not to share, but the coronavirus has created uncertainty. It is what it is, but uncertainty is a lot, is a huge opportunity, but the reality is many people are going to run away from this. It's our obligation, duty, and responsibility to run to it, to help the families that we've served in the past and the families that we are currently working with and the families that we want to get on our radar screen. So I have a secret real quick. To seize this opportunity, we all need to be proactive at this point. And again, I'm Kevin Martini. That's my son, not a picture of me when I was younger. Uh, but I've never been that young, and we, Logan and I, are both here to help you out. And to start, with, there. I think that what we need to start to do is to consider the starting point, which is on the top of the mind of so many people, and that is mortgage rates, because the mortgage rates today are creating a huge opportunity. However, they're not moving as low as they should. So the first thing you need to know is mortgage rates do not live in the stock market nor does the Fed control mortgage rates. Mortgage rates in, live in the bond market. And when I'm talking bonds, I'm not referring to treasury bonds. I'm referring to something called mortgage-backed securities. Now, mortgage-backed securities are how mortgages are actually pulled together. Like for example, when Jane wants to buy a house, I give her a mortgage, I shop all these different banks. The bank I choose, throws Jane's loan into a pool. That pool gets bought by an investment house. That investment house sells mortgage-backed securities to investors. Here's the challenge right now. The safe trade in these difficult times has actually been the treasury bond. So mortgage bonds have not been reacting as they have. Point number one, here's a 30-year, uh, a one-year chart of the 30-year mortgage-backed security. Here's what you need to know. When a bond price goes up, mortgage rates go down. Bond price up, mortgage rates down. Number one, interest rates today are more than 1% lower than they were a year ago. And when interest rates move lower than uh, by 1%, that amplifies somebody's buying power by 10%. In addition, what you need to know is we look at this in a more of a last quarter perspective, you have seen a big rise. That means rates were going lower, 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 lower. And then there's a little bit of turmoil here in the last couple of days. But let's kind of look at that turmoil in a little bit of a more of a uh, what happened. The beginning of January, uh, the coronavirus hit the wire. Then in the beginning of February, a very proactive step was the travel ban. Then in early March, the real story that created the turmoil, yes, the coronavirus was on the radar, but it was those Russians and those Saudis fighting over who could make more oil into the marketplace. And that actually caused the big shift and scared people. Then on Sunday, this most recent Sunday, and it was so important to understand, the Fed had a scheduled meeting for Tuesday, and it was so important that they came in over the weekend and dropped the Fed funds rate to zero. But as you notice, yes, mortgage bonds went dramatically up. 
However, the appetite for investors to pick those up is not here at this point. The T-bill is still remains the safest trade. With all that being said, one of the most popular calls that I'm getting in my office, and maybe you're getting too in your office, is, oh my gosh, mortgage rates went to 0%. Listen, here's the talking point number one you need to share. A, mortgage rates are still epic, but the Fed changed the Fed funds rate, which is essentially what the Fed, what the banks charge other banks to lend over overnight has nothing to do, uh, boys and girls, as it relates to the mortgage rates, but mortgage rates still remain low. Here's the thing real quick that's my suggestion real quick, two outlets. Up to the minute information, I post on my Instagram and I post on my Facebook business page. So if you're on the Instagram, if you're not, you need to be, I'm at Kevin Martini Live. And a direct link to my business page is kevinmartinigroup.com. Oh, by the way, please excuse the way I'm dressed, but I'm in a secret location. Uh, I'm not sick. I just don't want to get sick. But let's go back to, uh, in this little time capsule, way, way back when, January 1st. The world was bullish on real estate. And then I get it, the coronavirus reared its head. We had the oil problem. Then there was actually a run on the bank, just like the old movie classic. Mm -hmm. the but the reality is the Fed jumped in to solve that liquidity crisis with a 50 basis point move. And then they had that emergency meeting. But here's what I want everybody to know. Real estate is still a bull market right now. In addition, I don't know anyone that has lost money in the real estate market since this crisis has happened. If somebody is thinking about buying for the first time, it is a ground floor opportunity and it is your obligation, duty, and responsibility to help them. It's malpractice if you don't get the word that real estate is the safe trade. If somebody ever thought about moving up, now is the time to do that as well. Here's the thing real quick. There's also never a better time to sell the house you're in, upgrade, most likely your payment is going to be exactly the same. Now I want to give you, tell you about the light at the end of the tunnel real quick. You know that the coronavirus, actually the first case was reported on November 17th in China. And on March 14th, uh, in China, they closed the last emergency hospital. That says to me that the worst of the virus potentially could be 118 days. And if you use the emergency, uh, the state of emergency declared by the president, that means we're going to be have some turmoil times till 720. So here's what you need to know real quick. Mortgage rates will stabilize and may even get better. If you're thinking about refinancing, I'm telling you, put your, put your paws on the brake for a little bit because I think rates are going to get better as soon as money starts to go into the mortgage-backed securities. It's not my opinion only. The most recent Kiplinger letter indicated borrowers who just want to refinance should wait a week or so for post-it rates to adjust downward. Right now, the opportunity for any real estate professional is to pick up the phone. And who should they call? Everyone. I'm talking friends. I'm talking family. I'm talking vintage leads. Let me just tell you this. Vintage leads are gold, folks. If you take a look at online leads right now, only 15% convert in 45 days doesn't mean that the other 85% will not convert. All that it means is that we give up on them. So dust off those vintage leads and get proactive. Now, many people say, what do you say? So TC, Tina Call, are you in the house? I guess Tina's not in the house. Tina Call? Yeah. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Tina, let's do a quick little role play. Sure. Now listen, I get it. Some of you guys are graduate level at real estate. Some of you may not. 
So please give me your grace if you're at a graduate level. And if you have something to chime in, go ahead and do it because we want to make sure that all the EXP agents votes rise in this time. So Tina's a past client. I'm going to be a realtor. Tina, you be my past client. Is that okay? Yep. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Tina, this is Kevin Martini. I want to let you know that I was thinking of you. And are you and the family okay? Oh, Kevin, thanks for calling. Yeah, we're we're good. We're we're a little nervous about what's going on, but we're we're just sitting at home like uh, like we were instructed. Fantastic. That's smart. Listen, I know that there's some short supplies. Listen, I don't have a whole bunch of stuff, but is there anything you need that you think I can get you? Are you got enough toilet paper? <laughs> I think we're good for now, Kevin. Thank you so much for, for calling, but I think we're good. Fantastic. I, I want to let you know that, you know, when, when I sold you that house way back when, your real estate investment still remains strong. I got to tell you that you see this market going down, but real estate values have not. And I'm, I'm super excited because quite honestly, the house that you bought that area in is, is very, very hot right now. So yeah. a great decision there real quick. Um, oh, by the way, do you know what your rate is? You know, I think uh, we were thinking about that the other day. I think we're like closer to four and a half. Fantastic. Well, you know, here's the reality. I don't know if you know this. There might be a great opportunity for you to lock in your savings. You know, I might have my partner give you a call, but let me ask you this. Do you think you're, if you had a crystal ball right now, how long do you think you and the fam are going to live in that house? Um, you know, funny you should ask. We, we thought about moving and then this whole thing happened. Um, we were probably a couple years out, to be honest. Yeah. You know what we have found is that there's a lot of families that we work with and script. Listen, use the word we because Tina has a lot of families that are doing this. So EXP is we. So if you don't have an I, use a we. We are right back to the script. Hey, hey, Tina, you know, we're working with a lot of families right now, and some of them recently have decided now's the great time to upgrade because of these epic rates. In fact, your rate might start with a three. So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to go and do a 30,000 feet view of what your house might be worth, do a comparative market analysis for you go ahead and give you a snapshot of what your house might sell for. I'm also gonna put on the radar screen and talk to my lender, Kevin. Kevin's amazing. Whether you use him or not, 10, 15 minutes with him might help, help you go ahead and lock in your savings. Oh, by the way, who do you know that might be thinking about buying, selling, investing, or refinancing real estate? It might be a family member, a friend, a coworker. Do you have anybody on the radar you know? Actually, I think my in-laws are, are thinking about refinancing right now. We don't work with in-laws, but thank you very, very much. That's just a joke. Just, you know, Kevin Call, sorry. Anyway, so thank you for playing. Let's everybody give her a round of applause. But listen, the same thing is to be proactive with, with prospects because right now is the time to tell those prospects, hey, listen, if you've been pre-qualified, good for you. But as this market starts to heat up, that bull starts running down the streets of the triangle, right now people will need to make a same as cash offer and a pre-approval is not just required, it is required, not just nice to have. I like you to think of the word martini, mortgage approval required today, insist, never imply. And both Logan and I are here. Now listen, I get during these conversations, there's gonna be somebody Maybe everybody is going to be saying this. Oh my gosh, the sky is getting ready to fall. The recession is coming. The world is going to end. Here's the thing that you really need to know and you really need to keep it in your script. Share it on social media every minute that you possibly can. Recession does not mean housing crisis. Recession does not mean housing crisis. Listen, this is a graph of the last five recessions in recent times. In the 80s, I was still a kid, so I don't really know what happened there. In 1991, I do know what happened. The recession was caused by an oversupply of commercial real estate. In 2001, the recession was caused by the IT bubble. And we all better know what happened in 2008. But as I look at this graph real quick, here's what I want you to know. Three out of the last five modern day recessions, 
did positively impacted real estate value. And if we take the Great Recession of 2008 out of the equation, three out of the last four recessions, real estate values went up because home ownership is a hedge against inflation. It's my personal opinion, and there's a term in economics called the V-shaped recovery. That's what we think we're gonna happen because we're jumping off or slowing down from the highest point that our economy has ever been. With that being said, I want you to think about driving a car, driving on Highway 40, headed to the beach. We're going 84 miles an hour. We see a cop on the sidelines. We slam on the brakes, and now we're going 55 miles an hour. We're still going 55 miles an hour. We're just not going as fast as we were before. So the opportunity is now. And once that cat, that police officer passes, i.e. the coronavirus, we're gonna go back and be doing 85 miles an hour. So it's no longer breaking news, the coronavirus, it's a developing story. And the story is you are writing. Oh my God, Kelly, I went over. But here's the deal real quick. Both myself and Logan are here to help. Give us a call, 919-238-4934. We are dedicated to help you grow your business, and I really hope that you found this information helpful. I don't know if anybody has any questions. If so, jump in. Um, but uh, go. Ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today with you all. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. So hopefully everybody can see each other. Nobody's screen is sharing, and I've unmuted Tina and Marty and Sharon. And anyone else who has questions, if you can unmute yourselves when you need to speak, that would be very helpful. We're just trying to eliminate background noise. Yeah, that was awesome, Kevin. Thank you. He did that for our group. And the one thing I want to say, too, is, you know, our customers are so nervous right now. And, and so whoever you're putting them in touch with has to have a real positive energy because it can just it can just weigh you down if your lenders and your vendors and everyone's freaking them out. So we've really consulted with all of our vendors, our inspectors, our, our, our attorneys, and just as much as scary as we all know it could be, I mean, we have to be the, the voice of reason and the leaders and all of that. So Kevin, thank you for being so positive all the time. That is just a great energy to have right now. Thank you. And Kevin, your son is so good looking and he's got a full head of hair. <laughs> I know, I'm envious of that. Plus, my thigh weighs more than his whole body. There's that. I think she was talking to this, Kevin. Nice talking to this, Kevin. Listen, every time I've ever been through a recession with the stock market, and I've certainly been through a lot of them, we've always done really, really well. Um, I think this is a double punch because it's not only the stock market, it's the virus. And, and we went through 9-11, we came out the other end of it but it was one thing that had happened and it stabilized after that happened very quickly. But the virus is an evolving story and it's a two punch. So there's a lot of people, uh, they're scared. And it's, I love the approach that Kevin just gave to get in touch with your people and ask them if they're okay. They know what you do for a living. So they'll, uh, they'll get around asking you about real estate. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but I, I do think there's cash and chaos. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, the, the whole thing was jobs drive the economy. And to see that in the next coming months, you know, we may have a lot of people out of jobs. I think that's going to give us a two, three month kind of, you know, pause. Um, but I do feel like we all will have a strong fourth quarter. And your visual of the bounce back um, really resonated with me because as we all know, you know, back in 08, Marty, I mean, sure, and Sharon, we all you had to double down. I mean, you had to double down on your duties. You had to double down on the people that you call. But right now, I mean, you know, we may see some distressed sellers, some people that have to sell. And, you know, as sad as that is, it's going to happen. And we just have to be well equipped to help them salvage whatever equity they have in their home. So I think there's always going to be people moving and selling and divorce and death and, and job transfers, unless we're all on lockdown in a week. Um, I think that, you know, we just have to be prepared to help them. Does anyone want to share anything that they've seen or anything they have concerns about? I, I'll just say one thing. We had a, um, 
we did a Zoom call with our team earlier, and the people that are actually making the calls and speaking with their past clients are drumming up business. Quite honestly, I think Jennifer, she spoke with um, a past client yesterday, and they said, hey, my in-laws are looking to make a move, and um, they're looking to buy and sell. So people are, number one, going to answer their phones. Number two, are happy to talk to anybody that's friendly at this point. Um, and number three, we haven't, people haven't stopped thinking about real estate. If they were in the market to buy or sell, they're still in the market to buy or sell. There's just, it's the questions we have to answer for them and, and kind of watch these next couple of weeks and see what happens. But people are still looking to have those conversations. So just make the dang calls. That's advice from the handsome Kevin with hair. If I can add one thing real quick, and I also truly believe with all my heart, and Marty might give some testimony to this, the market share you gain in turmoil times will never be lost and becomes a client for life. Yeah, I think that um, you know the the thing that surprised me is is um, the panic. If if the younger and I've seen a lot of younger people fall prey to that. If you just are paralyzed and panic in front of your TV and you don't make that call. Uh, I think the people who are going to come out the other end are the ones that just rack up their numbers. They're just, you know, they're not making their calls right now because the market was so busy before this happened that they weren't making the calls. And if they, if they just panic during this time and just freeze, they're not going to come out the other side good. But if they've got some discipline and they can stay on the phone and they can, like Tina says, double down on those calls. And it doesn't have to be an intro about real estate. It'll go to real estate automatically, but just you've got to make those calls during this time. That's the ones that will soar when we're out of this. Yeah, Philip, how about you? I know you're always on the phones uh, every day. Um, you were telling Pam, you know, just some of your experience. Can you just share with the group, because I know you're a heavy uh, prospector. Can you share with the group kind of some of the feedback that you're getting? Yeah, let me unmute myself. I already did. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the thing I'm seeing, like I told my team this morning, it's really just your mindset. Um, don't put self-limiting thoughts, you know, like a lot of my team's like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. They don't want to speak with me. I'm like, has anyone told you not to call them? Has anyone told you not to speak with them? So my team just implemented every morning we're having an 830, like a Zoom call, and then we're having a 5 p.m., and we're just tracking – the basic things like how many conversations did you have? How many appointments did you set? How many contracts did you write? We're keeping it that simple right now. Um, and everybody's have to double down on their conversations. So like my goal now is 50 conversations a day. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing exactly what Kevin said. I'm just talking to people saying, Hey, how are you? How's the family? Do you need anything? Um, do you need me to bring you anything? I can leave it on your doorstep. You know, and it's just really just trying to be top of mind when they do need us. Um, and it really is about just them personally and not anything else at this moment. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, that's a great thought. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, we're at some point we're going to get through it. And like Kevin said, you know, when you look at China and you look at the numbers right now, they're, they're through it. And it went from November to March, but they came out of it. And so we're going to be heading into it. But I think they just need an action plan. They just need to know from us, what are we thinking as, as leaders of the real estate industry? What are we thinking and what are we doing about it? Um, real quick, I want to, um, Kelly, I see your screen there, but I just, Mark, Mark Z just hopped on the call. And for all of you that don't know him, um, he's a friend of mine and one of the people that helped bring me to EXP. And uh, his team is up in Michigan and they, uh, they will do six or 700 transactions. So I thought it'd just be interesting to see what their mindset is up there, their market. And, uh, so, and then I wanted to introduce you guys to Mark so you can follow him on social media. He does some really inspiring talks um, and we love following him on Instagram. So welcome, Mark Z. Thank you, thank you. I just came out of my hole. We were uh, 133 <laughs> feet underground. So I just came up just for this Zoom call today. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Well, share with us, you know, I mean, we all have different teams. Some people are individuals. Some people have big teams like Marty and, and Sharon. And um, just tell us a little bit about you and, and your team and, and what you guys are kind of seeing and doing. And maybe you have some ideas that we haven't thought of. 
Absolutely. So I'll tell you guys exactly what I told my team this morning. We had a morning huddle. Um, and we have one every Tuesday just to keep communication open. Right now, communication is everything. Uh, take it from the higher powers. Uh, if you've noticed, we've heard from our government almost every single day. The president is coming on. He's talking to the people. As leaders, we have to do the same thing. Um, whether you're a leader of a team or you're just an individual agent, keep in mind, um, the real estate industry, just like the stock market, is one of the, uh, the largest um, signs of how the economy is doing that people look at. So uh, the, the public is looking at you as a leader. They're looking at you to find out what's going on. You know, they know that when the stock market tumbles, it trickles other things. When the real estate market tumbles, it's going to trickle down to everything else. So, so people are looking at you uh, for information. Um, and, you know, we have to take this day by day. Um, when I first got on the call this morning with my team, they were going through objection handlers and how to handle, you know, when people don't want to sell or people don't want to buy. And, um, I think we've got to humanize ourselves right now. This is not a time where we want to put on our sales hat. People will crack under pressure. People will see right through you. Um, and we have to put ourselves aside. If you look at this whole coronavirus, um, for most people on this call, if not everybody, you know, we're, we're healthy. And we're going to make it through this. And the reason why uh, the government has us buckled down is not for us. We have to put ourselves aside. This is for, you know, 10 to 20 percent of society that if we don't do this right, they could get wiped off the map. So the same in our business. This shouldn't be about us. This should be about them. And this reminds me back in 07, 08, 09. Um, mm. In fact, if you go on my website, um, I've actually got a chart um, and it shows my sales and, and how my sales have progressed. And I tell you this because one of the, the biggest crisis of all time in all time U.S. history was 9-11. And that trickled us, that, that pushed us into a recession. And most realtors got out of the business. However, all right, so let's get back. So what I was saying is in, in 07, 08, 09, it was, it was some of my biggest growth spurts. Um, and... What happened was, you know, every realtor went into hibernation. Every realtor bought everything that the media was saying. Um, and so what we did was we doubled down. What I mean by that was instead of making 100 calls, we had to make 200 calls. And what I told my team today was, look, a lot of people are going to panic. A lot of buyers aren't going to want to buy. You're going to find sellers that don't want to sell. But you're also going to find people that still want to buy and sell real estate. One thing about this country, if you haven't noticed, um, whether it's, you know, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's bad. You've all lost a, a loved one. You've all lost someone you love. The next day, the world just keeps going. You know, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but we just don't stop. And eventually, this, we will eventually get through this and this will continue moving on. Right now, it's a time to build your pipeline, uh, build relationships, and humanize yourself. Take the money, I always say, take the money, put it aside and do the right thing. People that want to hold, no problem. You know, we put them on ice. But you're going to find people if you keep digging, if you keep turning over enough rocks, you're going to find sellers. You guys are dealing with it right now. There are still sellers that have to sell right now. We're going on appointments and we're still listing homes. And we have buyers that still want to buy right now. Keep in mind, as it stands today, most people are still employed. They're just working from home. So people can still buy right now. Now, could that change next week? Absolutely. And, and this all has to be fluid. You know, we're going to change as things change as we progress down this. But right now, this reminds me of 08 and 09 where, listen, a lot of people told me they weren't selling. A lot of buyers weren't buying. But there's still people that are going to buy and there's still people that are going to sell. So you just have to turn over a lot more rocks right now than you ever did before. You know, this is going to separate the men from the boys, the girls from the the little girls is you're going to have to do more in order to do the same amount of deals. But let me tell you what happens. This gets you in a routine. When we come out of this, you're going to be doing the same amount of prospecting and you're going to end up doing double the amount of deals because you're going to end up building these routines. You're going to end up getting used to working harder because let's face it. We all get complacent sometimes and we're in the greatest industry in the world because Hey, listen, we still at least have an opportunity. There's a lot of people sitting at home that have no opportunity. There's nothing they can do. They just got to sit there and wait and weather this storm out. We at least have an opportunity 
to still go out there and do something. Is it going to be harder? Absolutely. But that's what we signed up for, right? So that's what I told my team this morning. Um, we're still getting contracts signed every day. We're still getting listings. Business has not stopped. Um, has it slowed down a little bit? A little bit. We haven't really felt much of a pinch. Do I expect it to slow down a lot more? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't got my head in the sand. I know it's, uh, they're tightening it up. Um, every day it's getting tightened up a little bit more. But like I said, uh, you're just going to build your pipeline right now because once we get through this, it's, I have no doubt this is going to explode. There's going to be so much pent up demand. Uh, you know, every month, at least here in my market, we have around 5,000 homes that sell. If we go down to 2,500, my team knows that in the coming months, it's going to be double up. It's going to double up. So right now, build that pipeline. If someone's not ready, no problem. You know, set up a follow-up. That doesn't mean they're never going to be ready. Um, in fact, we still even have some of our marketing going. We have a lot of our online marketing going because we're building that pipeline, getting ready for when this thing clears. Uh, if, if history repeats itself uh, and you see what's going on in other countries, it's going to clear. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to clear. It's just a matter of who's going to be surviving when it does clear. And I don't mean surviving life-wise. I mean surviving business-wise, you know, financially-wise. So any questions, guys? I think that's great. I think it's just, you know, it's just something we all need to hear. Um, I heard something, you know, that I thought was really good. It was the five C's of leadership. Um, I just want to go through those, those five points. But if anybody has a question for Mark, because uh, your team will do, what, 600 transactions was the goal this year? Or that was the goal. Honestly, January and February, that's what sucks about this. January, we closed 67. February, we, we put, uh, I think, uh, 74 under contract. Like, we're on pace to do over 800. So we were, like, blowing away everything. Yeah. And now it, it could end up being uh, an average year. But, you know, that's yeah. life. That's what happens. But that, That's true. Does anyone have a question for Mark? Anyone? Anyone? Well, I'll just go through these these quick, just five C's of leadership. I think they, they resonated. Um, so one of them, you know, communicate daily with clients, the, the five C's. Double down on success calls to buyers and sellers. Over communicate with your people. So I've got people calling me daily and they're typically our clients. Those are the ones that want to know the action plan. Um, number two, communicate with vendors, staff, and fellow agents. So I think that was big for me is, you know, like the Kevin Martinis, you know, he's He's really positive. And when I send a buyer to get pre-approved, I want to make sure that buyer gets helped, but also potentially inspired and sees the good in it. Um, so I think working with the right vendors is key right now. Um, you can text two-minute videos uh, to your clients just to kind of let them know that you're there. Um, you know, agents too, when you're talking to the other agent on the other side of the deal, it might just be a good time to lift them up. You know, you don't know if they have a support group like we have. I mean, we all have each other, but a lot of times brokerages don't work this way. So the fact that I can be on a call with Mark and Sharon and, and Kelly, um, Nebras and Marty, it, it's just neat that we can all come together like this um, and share with the community and consumers, um, keeping them calm and confident and optimistic. As sometimes you wake up and you go, oh my God, we're, this could be really shitty. But you know, then you have to turn your mind around and work on your mindset every single day. Um, clean up, catch up. So number four, focus on making processes easier for agents, vendors, clients. Um, it's a great time to do that right now. And then five is cash, cash, cash. So we all have to review our monthly recurring expenses, eliminate things that don't make sense. I know, Mark, you and I were talking about that. You know, you might have to just make those hard decisions right now to save a little money, you know, call calling Zillow and seeing if they'll give you a little bit of a discount. I think we're at a point where in the next two, three months, it could be a little tight. So, um, so you want to have enough cash to rebuild the business, you know, when this upswing comes back, because if you don't, we're toast, um, not to be negative, but I think that's just kind of the point that we're in right now. So, so those were my five C's that resonated with me. Good stuff. Yeah. Marty, anything to share or Kelly, I know you've got some slides you wanted to share. A quick question, if you don't mind. Um, for those of us that have, you know, heavily used coming soon um, and have homes that were planned to be on the market, like let's say this week, next week, and even really over the next 30 days, I'm curious to hear what strategies 
um, you all are employing. I mean, we're fortunate that for some reason we've been on a run of all vacant homes. So we're really not having to deal with sellers going, hey, I don't want people in my house, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do to tell these people to go on the market, wait. I mean, we still saw some multiple offers this past weekend, but just curious to know what you guys are doing. Well, I, th I think coming soon is a great vehicle right now because you don't have to go on the market. It's almost like going on the market Christmas week or Easter weekend. You just don't do that. Uh, so you've got some, some tools to wait uh, for the people who are occupied their home. You know, another thing we've been talking about is just, um, you know, for the people who really have to sell, you can leave the doors open, the closet doors, everything. You can have a notice there. You can put all kinds of things out. Like yesterday, we were talking about putting out plastic gloves and some, some things for your feet and that kind of thing. But you know that if you do that in certain homes, all of them are going to disappear. So you just put out a few at a time, maybe. Uh, there's people that have to sell in any situation. They still have to sell it. You're the luckiest of luckiest if you've got a vacant home. I think that's a wonderful position. But I also think this is a great time to use coming soon homes. My own house is going on the market this weekend. And I'm not going to stop that from going on the market because there's built up, you know, I've had quite a few calls about it. So I'm going to still let it go on. But another thing I'm probably going to do is probably going to restrict showings. Uh, I'm going to have a smaller window of showings and just cut down on those showings. So all of those things are open to our sellers. And if our sellers have prepared their house to sell, uh, like me, for example, um, if I let it go for a month or two, it's going to get all messed up again. I've got it all perfect now. So I kind of want to strike right now and let it be seen while it's at its best. Now, if, if I don't have any showings, I can pull it off the market again. And I think too, Marty, you know, when we have sellers, like right now, I have a couple sellers that have been on the market for 30 days and they're kind of in freak out mode. You know, we're going to look at it day by day. And like you said, if we just get no showings and things just die down, I, we were thinking we could pull all those homes. We can add them to our coming soon website again and kind of redirect buyers to that just so they kind of have a place setting, you know, right there on, you know, have some kind of visual aspect there where buyers can go and, and look. Um, and this is for sellers, like you were saying, Mark, if they're nervous and afraid, you just kind of got to meet them where they're at. We can't convince them to stay on the market if they feel it's a bad time. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. How about as far as position on overlapping showings? Um, you guys allowing it right now or kind of, you know, making it certain times for showings? So here's what we're doing. Guys, let the clients just run the show right now. If you try to pressure them, they're going to crack. You know, it's all about them right now their comfort renee like if they say we're okay with that you know maybe just go through this is what we're doing you know and and we're going to let showings in one at a time you know because the reality is they don't want us to be around groups of 10 or more people i mean usually you have an agent and two people you know they don't have 10 kids running around typically um so if you have a few people in your home and you're you know staggering it i don't think it's that bad because people are still going to go to the gas station they're still going to go get groceries they're still going to be around humans at this point until they quarantine us all so i think if they look at it in those small little nibbles and then they disinfect their house afterwards i think they'll be okay but i'm no doctor i don't know <laughs> I was just more thinking about ease of buyer's concerns. I mean, like I said, my situation is unique in the fact that I do have a lot of vacant inventory coming up. So most of those sellers are like, hey, whatever, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm thinking more from the buyer, buyer agency standpoint, if, if we're putting kind of a notice out there to say, hey, we're trying to be respectful, um, you know, instead of allowing overlapping showings, because there's a couple of, you know, fairly hot properties coming up. Um, I, I don't know. It was just kind of thought idea there I guess. I had one of my buyer's agents yesterday that uh, she is she's actually got asthma so she's wearing plastic gloves to her showings and, and they're just taking extra precautions they're just being a little bit sensible and um, she's wearing plastic gloves and she's giving her buyer she's putting the buyer in the car behind them instead of putting them in the car with her uh, so there's just there's some things we can do. Um, but I think Mark's right. We've got to be really sensitive to these people. I'm not going to be pushy at this time. I'm not, Tina, I'm not going to be my typical That's A like right. personality. Your driver self. Sign I'm here. Not, Sign I'm, here. I'm dialing it back a notch. 
Well, and I think we all need to be like, like Mark said, we need to be humanized and, and understand that every, you know, everyone's going to have different issues. So, um, so we're not pushing our agenda right now. We're just trying to be, you know, confident for them, comfortable, making them comfortable. Um, I've got sellers that are like, let's go. I mean, we've got a house Thursday. They want to move to Florida. And he said, well, if everybody's not bringing their home to market and they're afraid, that gives me a bigger opportunity in front of the buyer. So he's got a different mindset about it where I've got other sellers freaking out that people are coming into their home that could be infected with the virus. So right. it just really depends on that person's mindset and we just got to meet them where they're at. That's, um, that's one objection script handler we've been using. We're saying a lot of people aren't putting their house on the market there's still a lot of buyers looking. So it's a great time for you to list your home because you're not gonna have as much competition, which means you're gonna get top dollar. So we've been yeah. using that and we're starting to do a lot of video tours. Um, so I've got all my photographers going back out to our listings and doing video tours. So if it does get worse, we're prepared for it to do video tours and possibly still write offers without showing homes. Yeah, I mean, the reality is if it gets worse, I mean, my opinion is if I'm a buyer and I'm sitting in my house and it gets worse and the media is crazy and you see people in hospitals, I just don't think a buyer is going to be like, I can't wait to go buy a home today. I mean, unless they absolutely have to, I think we're going to see a lot of the people that would like to not do anything. Um, that's how I would be. If I don't have to go buy a house right now, why the hell am I going to be out there looking? I'm just going to kind of sit and wait, but there will always be people going through divorce, people dying. Um, people losing their jobs that, that were one mortgage payment away from, you know, being bankrupt. I mean, the, I hate to say it, but that happened in 08 to 11. And I sat at the table with people crying over, you know, not being able to make their mortgage payments. So we just have to be more prepared for those people. Um, you know, again, meet them where they're at and help them potentially get out of these houses that they may lose if they can't make two or three mortgage payments. I don't know, but we'll just have to be prepared. Here's, a, here's a, something, I've got some people in here with me today, so I keep this on my lamp in front of my uh, desk, and it looks at me every day, and I don't know whether you can read it or not, mm -hmm. uh, but it simply says, every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit, and I believe that. I mean, I believe you've got to sometimes just dig for it really deep, and this is that time. Mm -hmm. Kelly, you had some things you wanted to share. I think. Well, you know, I meet with my agents in the morning for the last three weeks since I read the Miracle Morning book. And whenever we start out the day, uh, my, my goal is to get them, you know, feeling really positive about their calls. They're new agents, so they're doing a lot of phone time. I told them they're very well prepared for the market that we're coming into. Um, and today we had just put together some notes from the Seven Levels book, which I'm sure a lot of people have read. Just to let everybody kind of have a a moment to think about the fact that our attitude and how we're perceived by our clients is going to dictate what happens with our clients next. Mm -hmm. And if we don't appear calm, and if we don't offer, as you said, a human touch where we care about how they're feeling. I had a mother with two children that were starting work at this week. She wanted to know, can I make sure no one is coming to work on the house that's sick? Well, at first, my knee-jerk reaction was, you know, what is she talking about? And then my more calmer reaction was absolutely, I feel that's always a given, but in these circumstances, I will make doubly sure that no one's coming there that, you know, has a cold. So I think, again, just listening to them and responding to what their needs is all we can do right now. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, the, the one thing I can't guarantee is, you know, if somebody does come and they're carrying that virus and they feel fine, you know, that's the scary part is that, those contractors could go to the house and be carrying it. We don't know, but you know, again, that's the risk that people are going to have to take inviting people into their home. And, and but and people are still being relocated. People right. are still in need of getting mortgages off. And I had an open house on Saturday. I was very worried. We had about 20 people show up. So that was reassuring. The next day we had about five showings and that was up in Granville County. We all know it's a little harder the further we are from the mainstream. So my hope right now is that things will stay strong. And I'm glad we're doing these meetings because now we can all talk next week about how our weekends have gone with our new listings and any yeah. open houses. And I, all we can do is react. And really your point on the, um, the showing time app, if nobody uh, went to it, I forgot about it. And I know Kelly, you use it all the time, but to see where showings are in certain price ranges, I think is really helpful for our sellers. 
um, we were able to show a seller that, you know, over a million dollars, we had the most showings in all of Cary uh, versus competitors. So again, it's just kind of pouring into information to them and doing twice as much contact um, as ever before. And I think that'll keep people kind of calm. Um, Philip was talking about the video. I think we all do video. We all do great tours. I think we've all come together to train each other. Not everyone's doing the 360 tours. If anyone wants to add that, give me a call. I've gone through several cameras over the years. We've been doing those for a number of years. And I think that with the video, I mean, we've all sold homes to people out of state that never saw them. We're very capable. We just need to be prepared to do that for every listing. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And I love our calls. I know. Anything else anybody's going through or has heard from a client that, that they need help on? Because um, a lot of people on the call are, you know, one to two years in the business. So if this is freaking you out, just make sure you reach out to us. I mean, again, we don't know what every day will bring, but, um, but we have been through times like this that were challenging. And the reality is you just got to work harder, um, work harder, work smarter. Um, don't let your mindset feel like you're calling people and you're bugging them or you're, you're some, you know, salesperson at this point. Um, people have to transact and, and their most important asset many times is their home. So, um, so it's good to hear from it or see some positivity. So any questions that anybody I has? Think, Tina, I think we'll be surprised at how many of us are touched by the virus in some way once we start reaching out. I know that I already have one client with a cousin in the hospital in New York and she's 55 and they're not sure if she'll recover and even harder, they can't go visit her. So it is going to get to where it touches us all. And I think we just need to be very mindful that it's really just a matter of time. I agree. I agree. Um, on a, on a, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, uh, we had a guy back out yesterday on one of our, um, he was about to close on my house in Cary and his big pushback was, well, I don't think we've hit bottom yet. Um, and I want to back out of my deal because I could probably get a better deal in two or three months when the recession hits. Um, and my comment back was to him, well, how do you know this isn't a bottom? I mean, you just know, there's no crystal ball to know what bottom is or what bottom means. That doesn't mean your interest rates are going to be better. That doesn't mean they're going to sell the house cheaper. You know, traditionally we see in recessions, homes don't lose values except for the last one because it was based off mortgages. Uh, but I still couldn't pull him back in. You know, he's just like, well, I think I'm going to wait. Um, how are people handling that objection? Well, I think like we've talked about before, I mean, this is, this is unfortunately for people like you that are like, hey, I'm in build mode. I mean, this is going to put a big halt. And so it kind of hurts sometimes because you're like, man, I'm, I'm working these deals every day. I'm making these calls. And you're just going to have people that, you know, you can't guarantee that guy that in two, three months, it's not going to be complete hell. And, yeah. and you're going to see sellers lowering their prices by 20, 30% just to get out of these houses. And so and if, you, don't, if you don't know that for sure, I mean, you just have to kind of meet him where he's at and, and say, you know what? Because if you don't, he's going to move on from you and he's going to use another realtor that will. Yeah. And that's what I told him. I said, look, man, I'm, you know, I know, and I really was personal with him because he just canceled his wedding. I said, look, man, I know you're going through a lot, a lot of uncertainty. You, you don't know what's going to happen. I understand where you're coming from. I'm here to help you whenever you are ready. I'll keep you updated weekly on the market. He's like, well, that's all we can do. And I promise when I am ready to buy, I'm going to use you, of course. I mean, so I kind of just let it go gracefully because, you know, I don't want to, you know, my biggest pet peeve with agencies don't have commission breath. Like we're in a relationship-based business to help people. And if he's feeling that uncertain, no matter what I say, he's not going to change it. Right. And you, you know, you want to try to, I guess, objection handle, but it's, I think it's going to be a little different um, objection handling time uh, moving forward. But, you know, as Warren Buffett, he's probably salivating right now over the, the stocks and there's always opportunity where there's, there's issues like this. So I think some investors, I've already had calls from people saying, how low do you think the market's going to go? People that are buying properties, this is going to shake out a few deals for them and they're excited about it. And it sucks that, you know, they could take this opportunity and, and run with it and people are going to hurt over it, but that's just the way the world works. Unfortunately. Philip, I'm wondering what price range that was in your fall through. Uh, 400,000. Yeah. In Cary, you know, we had a fall through yesterday in Cary 375. It was through due diligence and they lost their earnest money. It was an accountant and they would actually buy it for an investment home. 
and her thought was exactly the same thing. If I wait a while, I can get this house. And I said, well, I said, that's going to be interesting because right now in Cary, we only have a one month supply and we're actually selling more houses than we have actively on the market. I said, I might follow that price, that line of thought if you were in six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar price range, but it's going to take quite a while before we're giving away 300 below four hundred thousand dollar houses in Cary. So, and I had her talked into it and then she went home and talked to her husband and, you know, wasn't talking to both of them. It was a sad day for me, but uh, I thought it was very logical and very thought through because I don't care what happens with this. We still are losing houses from the bottom up and yeah. it's going to take some kind of long thing, protracted uh, depression for us to get down to those 150, 250, 350 thousand dollar houses. And they're just not building them anymore. That's what we tell our team. They're not building houses at 250, not ha not single family homes. They're just not there. And they, I don't think they're ever going to be there for our market again, just because our market's so attractive. Um, and we lost a $600,000 buyer. My listing under contract, two days from closing, the buyer backed out and they lost 10,000 bucks. And it's like, they just, you know, they got cold feet and that's just going to happen. There's going to be a handful of those. And then you've got other people, you know, we've got two of our agents out there with million dollar buyers right now looking at million dollar properties. So it's just, it again, just depends on the individual. We were actually looking at stats last year and interestingly enough, 30% of our homes sold sight unseen, both buyer and seller side. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, you know, huge. Granted, you know, we work with a large investment pool, but um, I just thought that was interesting. I mean, to me, that's that's a very positive, I mean, you know, I look at it from our perspective, we're already built to sell homes sight unseen. This isn't a foreign, you know, subject matter or anything like that. I mean, yes, the, the coronavirus is bringing a different element into it, but, you know, we've had that capacity to do that all along. So, I mean, you know, I think there's going to be some people that take advantage of this opportunity. Like you said, Tina, there's going to be other folks that are, are going to be much more cautious. And I think it just kind of depends on your clientele, how, you know, how to kind of go through that. Agreed. Anybody else have any, any issues or questions or concerns? Can I say something? Yes. On a positive note. Today's Jennifer's birthday. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday, Jennifer. <laughs> that's right. We would have known if we were in the office. <laughs> Happy birthday. We love you. Yes, we do. And we'll thank celebrate you, thank you. this is over. We're we'll out and celebrate. <laughs> thank you. We're looking forward to it. I'm going to bring up here right after this for you. Uh, that's right. She was excited that my trip got canceled, but then we so have to social distance. So <laughs> that is so true. Time later on on uh, on Zoom and celebrate. <laughs> it. A birthday right. Zoom call. I a like birthday it. Zoom call with wine. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, I didn't realize how much I really like people until you don't get to see people all the right? time. <laughs> true. Yeah, Intro introverts are even going to get bored of this quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. I think this was a good call, and I'm glad that we did it. And um, so just, you know, as you run into things, I guess write them down, and we'll all just work on them together, because this is new territory for all of us, I think. I'm so glad we did this on Zoom, too. I think we had less technical difficulties. Thank yep. you. It was, Kelly, was it you that set that up? Yes. It was, but uh, Friday, Tina, you're going to set it up? Yes, we'll do the, the Zoom, and, and uh, we'll do it this way again, I guess. This is kind of nice, and We'll do whatever training we were going to do. I mean, we'll try to, you know, keep them short and sweet and just keep doing what we do. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.